last thing mentioned before we got into the, the broadcast, you mentioned that <laughs> specific clown, and that's so funny. But uh, so it is what it is. What can we say? Hello, everybody. We're glad you're here tonight. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh man, that's funny. I was afraid you were going to get into detail in that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Remember what I say: what happens in the green room, green room stays, stays in the green room. Green room. So. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. So tonight we are actually live on in the group and on my page and on LinkedIn. We're on all cool. three. So Good. we should probably have more people. That would be awesome. And um. Yes, indeedy. Make sure if you're a Facebook user, make sure if you're um, commenting that you put your name in the comment with your right. comment because we can't always see. Um, hello, my dear friends. I wonder who that is. Uh, I don't know, but I, we have such friendly people. I love this place. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell me well, about your trip i know the the internet messed up but the, the group hasn't gotten to hear oh, about your trip well and we almost had this problem tonight because uh 25 minutes ago i all of a sudden didn't have internet <laughs> and i had to call Com and xfinity or whatever in the heck they're called today and um everything and got it sorted and I just still don't know what happened. I all of a sudden came back online and it wouldn't let me connect the laptop to my phone as a hotspot. I was, <laughs> I was on the verge of calling you and crying <laughs> <laughs> and, and it came back on it. All of a sudden it said your internet service is back. And I don't know what that was because the phone said there was no outage in my area. So it was me somehow. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I like the one eyebrow thing. That That's a good look for you. That's what my dad used to do that. And I would literally, I, when I was a kid, I remember getting in front of the bathroom mirror and trying to practice <laughs> that because my dad did it. I, oh, look, I can kind of do it, although I look like I had a stroke when I do it. <laughs> I could get arrested for doing this in public. Look at that. I go, go up to a place like this and, and a woman punches me in the nose. <laughs> Rightfully so. Rightfully so. I think I, the double hey, Brit. is funny. There's Teresa too. Hey, Teresa. Oh, and Harjeet. Oh, Harjeet. Hey. Harjeet. Awesome. Yes, indeedy. And, so what uh, kind of, what ports did y'all go to on your trip? I didn't get off the ship, so I'm not totally sure. Um, they, I did get off the ship briefly. I, I go for the ship because I love the ship. I do too. I do right. Too. So the, I go on. We went on Symphony of the Seas, which is one of the largest cruise ships uh, in their fleet. Of course, it's the mm -hmm. Oasis, Oasis class. I want to go. Shouldn't we go as a group? We really on, should. They have the next size up. They got a new size that's coming, and it's called Icon of the Seas, and it's okay. going to be the first one in the Icon class which is the bigger ship than Oasis class even. I've been on a couple of them that were in the Oasis class. Um, went out of Miami, I was on a, a trip. Gosh, I can't remember how long ago it was. And then, uh, I forget where the other one, well, they may have both been, been out of Miami. But um, yeah, I'm one of those people that, that doesn't matter if it's a big ship or a small ship, because when it comes to cruising size, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time <laughs> that, that should have stayed in the green room too i apologize to everyone i'm in a i'm in a snarky mood today <laughs> snarky <laughs> i kind of like that word snarky yeah that's yeah. awesome so do you stay on the ship or you do the port thing oh i do the ports too oh. fact, i did one uh, at, when galveston started running cruises out of there uh, many years ago i started doing a lot of cruises out of galveston it, it was a convenient place to take my Sales people on if they, we'd run a contest, I'd take them for a short cruise out of Galveston. Uh, but uh, and uh, one of the cruises that we did out of Galveston, one of the ports we went to was oh, it's in Mexico. Oh gosh, I can't think of the name of it now. Oh, Progresso, something oh. Progresso. And I determined that it basically that was that was uh, Latin or Spanish for. Yard sale. <laughs> That's pretty much all that particular port was. There was nothing, nothing to go do outside of that. No. We did yes, a, yeah. Go ahead. I don't. I don't like to go to the ones where everybody's really, really poor. And I know that sounds horrible, but the reason I'm on the cruise ship is so I can pretend I'm really, really rich. So if I wanted to like be really, really poor, I'd just go back to Trilla Park. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but that's why I don't like to get off when that's all the port's about. Because right. I'm pretending. I'm pretending for the whole week. Well, we did a cruise right before COVID. Uh, it was my in-law's 60th anniversary oh. time frame. And so uh, we had 
well, it was a cruise out of uh, Galveston, but we went all the way over to the Grand Cayman. It, oh. was, it was a great cruise. And it was on. Uh, and that's your favorite place, you said. Yeah. Well, it's oh. no, it's one of my favorites. My okay. favorite, my favorite place overall is the British Virgin Islands, uh, around Virgin Gorda, uh, Jos Van Dyke, St. Thomas, and we have a, a, someone who's part of our group, C. Benet, uh Trevino, is, uh, and she's married now, and I'm, and her husband's name is Tim, and they they. Do the, they do the best, they have the best life in the world because they it's a catamaran thing and they're the captain and the first mate on the catamaran. See, but they used to be one of my sales team up here with Aflac. No. And she's, she's still active with Aflac too, but she's done well. And so now she and her husband, Tim Clark, they uh, they he's the captain, she's the first mate. I've done those cruises for her. They, every morning they, they open up a map and tell, tell the guests, okay, where would you like to go? Yeah. And, and there's like three oh, couples on the me. boat. And the, the first mate is a gourmet chef and fixes these great meals. It is literally the best trip I've ever been on in my life. Wow. Isn't she the one I just sent the Beach Money book to? Uh, she said something in the comments and I sent her a copy of Beach Money. I'm pretty sure. I think you did, actually. Yeah. That, she, she's a great girl. She and her husband are both just fantastic people. That's awesome. Because I went on their site and got pictures off for of the card that went with the book. Yeah. They're they're <laughs> they're. Nice. Um, Ship their their catamaran's name is boy I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. See, but they, you'll see this later. I, I apologize for not, uh, not remembering the name of the boat, but I'll share it when they post stuff. I'll share it because I would love for people I know to book with them. Yeah. And then, you know those those aren't cheap trips. You've got it to you know be ready to do that. But you get three couples and basically you know you're covering all the expenses on the boat for three couples. Oh yeah. And it, when I did it before, it was uh, I think it was a week long cruise, but it was so much fun that every morning the captain said, okay. Here are the islands right here. Where would y'all like to go today? Oh. Well, let's go to that one. You want to? <laughs> <laughs> went to a place called Sydney's Peace and Love. And later when I went back and took my, my uh, regional managers and their spouses to Virgin Gorda, we stayed at the Bitter and Yacht Club for a week. I chartered a little boat and took them over to Yost Van Dyke to take them to Sydney's Peace and Love because it's one of the most unique dining experiences I've ever had in my life. Oh. Uh, it... Uh, when I went the first time, you couldn't even dock. You literally had to swim up to the restaurant <laughs> and it had, uh, it has outdoor picnic tables. The, the drink menu is, uh, it, they've got coolers for your drinks and a yellow, and I'm, I'm pointing over here. Like you guys can see this. Okay. <laughs> and, and when those yellow pads on the wall, you write your name down and what you got, it's the honor system. So they'll charge you at the end. Oh. They, they brought out lobsters that I am not exaggerating. <gasps> they were, Wow. Uh, let's see. Where's the right? They were easily this big. Wow. Was huge. Wow. Uh, and corn and potatoes. And, you know, I, I forget how much they were the first time I was there. It was, it was probably about a $20 meal for wow. that. Uh, wow. when, later, when I took my regions there, they were, were 12 of us or 14 of us there. It was a bigger tab than $20. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still fun. It was one. And then as we go back that night, we're going back on the boat and, um, a thunderstorm's coming in. And this is a motorboat that we're going back to, to Virgin uh -oh. Gordo and a thunderstorm's coming in. And uh, it was so cool because on one part of the sky, you're seeing stars and you can see stars down there for forever. And then on the other side, you're seeing clouds and the lightning and you're seeing all that as we're high telling it back, trying to beat the storm back. It was such a, an amazing. Wasn't it kind of scary? No, oh. not really. No. Okay. I can, I can swim. I hope, I hope everybody else can, but I know I could swim. <laughs> hey, yon yon. <laughs> Did you, you say that? I, you know, uh, this all all the women on this call are going to absolutely relate to me when I say this. But when we're coming back from somewhere from like a two hour trip, and I'm with other people in the van, and I have to pee, <laughs> I say. It's every man for himself the minute I put it in park. So because <laughs> I'm going first and I'm not I'm not seeing what you're doing. So it's every man for himself. So is that what you say when you're on the boat? <laughs> no, rumor, rumor has it that on, on a boat, if, if, uh, if the guys have to go to the restroom, they just go to the back of the boat and go to the restroom. That's well, I didn't rumor. mean going to the restroom. <laughs> I meant swimming away <laughs> if you had a problem. <laughs> no, I'm sure you guys just peed wherever you want because in the man village, right? Uh, well, the world it, is your urinal. It was in international waters. There was no problem. <laughs> <laughs> international waters. Oh, God. <laughs> but back to the, the cruise we did right before yes. COVID. It was like the end of January into the first part of February, right before COVID hit. Matter of fact, uh, my brother in law had a trip to Italy the next week and 
it was that when they got there, it was doubtful that they were going to be able to come back. It, we're mm. talking about the time that everything began to shut down. And, um, but we took a, the cruise. It was a, one of the Royal Caribbeans. I don't remember which one, but it went to one of the places that went was Grand Cayman. And when I go on a trip like that, my wife and I like to get a tour guide and we'll, yeah. we'll get somebody that will take us around for the day. And we usually try to find a local that someone will recommend to us. And, oh, nice. and this last time that we were on Grand Cayman, lady was going to take us around for, I think, I think three hours or something like that. And we'd agreed on the price and it wasn't very much. And she just kept, she got us back in plenty of time not to miss the boat or the ship, but uh, she spent way more than three hours with us and we bought her lunch and drinks and all that and just had a blast with her. And, and so it's the best way, as long as you're sure it's safe. And the only way you'll know it's safe is if you get a recommendation from someone. But oh yeah, You can get a local to take you around. That's We've done that a lot. And it, uh, we did it in Italy one day and a, and a girl took us all through uh, Chianti and, and uh, Monte Pulciano. And it was just uh, wow. it's a great experience. But when we, when we do the blue hair trip, whether it's a cruise or whether we do uh, like different spot hopping, Hawaii or whatever, we, you, we've got to get some tour people lined up that, for, right. for people who want to do that. Cause it's just, it makes it such a better experience. Yeah, I, I got a feeling you're more worldly about this than me, evidently. <laughs> but yeah. you meant that in the best possible way, didn't you? Okay. Bless your heart. Bless my heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'll be fun. But we, we're going to have to work in a few things or do more than one thing because we got to do the whole Garth concert here. And he's doing a residency in Vegas right now. Did you know that? I did not. Did he go, did he go back to the wind? Nope. <laughs> No, nope, he went, um, where did he go? He's at another hotel, though, and doing a res residency. And it's supposed to be Garth plus one, and the one is his guitar or something like that. It's well, You know, it's, I, I never saw the show when he was at the wind, but I heard it was just him and his guitar, basically. It, that, well, I saw it. Remember, it was, well, and I, I couldn't talk right. Oh, and you know what I didn't tell you? The other time I saw him, I saw him four. I thought it was two, three. Um my friend Erica drives once, so she doesn't right now, but she was driving for Lyft. Mm -hmm. And they had some incentive where you got box seats at the Garth thing on July 4th. Now, even though I'm out of my mind, because I wasn't much younger, this was only a few years ago, a couple years ago. Right. Um, I actually flew out to Las Vegas the night before on July 3rd. And I only stayed one night and flew back the 4th. I went to that concert with her. <laughs> <laughs> that talk about beat beat my body to death that was bad <laughs> but it was worth it <laughs> yeah i should know better than to do stuff like that but <laughs> I, I would I, I would love to go see garth in concert i've just never done it and all the times that i don't like fighting crowds in big concerts so the right way for me to see him would be like whatever he's whatever oh, hotel Vegas. He's at. So, yeah. yeah yeah that is a small yeah, the win, it was awesome. And he did a bunch of, he did covers. He didn't even sing his own stuff. It was almost all covers. And okay. then he was telling stories about uh, what was going on because he thought it was funny, the the music in the 70s. And he, he's right, with, you uh, had the same stuff going on in all of the songs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he was talking about that and he would do an example. We were all laughing. He was a really good, like a stand-up almost. He was so funny about it. Yeah. I hadn't seen him interact that much on a show, but that well, was awesome. When, uh, he, there was a uh, something in Washington, D.C., and I want to say it was a Smithsonian thing, but it, it may have been Kennedy Center. I'm not sure why. But anyway, they were doing a thing honoring Garth one night. And uh, when he got on stage, he did a lot of that kind of stuff. He was talking about different oh. stuff. He wasn't just playing his stuff. He was playing yeah. he was playing the music that influenced him. And that's you know that was part of his story. I bet you that that's the same thing he did at The Wind. Yeah, maybe. that was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, I hadn't, uh, the wind was neat. I hadn't been there, that hotel either before. I've stayed there and even was staying there when he was playing and I didn't get a ticket and they were sold out. I bet you were mad. <laughs> I don't get mad like that. But I, was, I, was, I was disappointed though. I'm sure I paid too much money for our tickets because we were right fourth row in the center. <laughs> but see, I, I, I'm kind of like that. I'm like, if I'm going to go, if I'm going to spend the money, I'm not going to sit in the nosebleed section. That's not worthwhile, really. Right. So, well, have you ever gone to a Cirque du Soleil performance in Vegas or anywhere? Um, yes. 
I like the Cirque, like I, I like the Cirque du Soleil performances, and when I go, I want to be down front. Yeah, because then you're getting the the, the biggest experience, you know. And uh, <laughs> there's one in Las Vegas, and it's called Zumanity. And for those of you that are watching, that you may know of the show, Zumanity is like basically an R-rated version of Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> and um, did you there know are things that you don't normally see going on at a Cirque du Soleil. And did you know what ahead of going in? Uh, no. Oh, you this didn't? Is my, my computer's doing this. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I knew. I knew. But, oh, okay. Okay. Um, the, uh, that would have been funnier if you didn't know and they were all well, of a sudden. <laughs> I turned it into something funny the next trip because the next trip, uh, my in-laws were going my wife. And so I said, well, we could go see this one. <laughs> and I knew it would blow them away. And it did. <gasps> so tacky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, they, and they looked at you like, really, Jeffrey? <laughs> well, they're, they're, no, they, they actually are very good sports. Now, my wife wasn't as good of a sport about it. But they, they were. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, they, they, it was and the, before it opens up, they always have clowns or whatever going around messing with the crowd. And in this particular case, they had two uh, ladies, or maybe more than two. Topless. Dressed, no, 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 no. Okay. They, were, they were very full at the top. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't top less. They were top more. But, uh, they, no, they were, they were, they were clothes. Top they were dressed. Four. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, Sorry, this, is a, this is a strange version of the show tonight. I hope everybody's getting something out of this. But the, uh, but um, they, they, and they're, they're wearing these, they, I, I say French made looking things, but that's not exactly right. But, <laughs> and, and they were all uh, larger. And, yeah. and, and so they're going around with these trays of strawberries and, and to offer them to people. And every time they'd, they'd, they'd offer it to the row in front of them, and then they'd bend over and they'd stick their rear end to the whoever, I mean, whoever was sitting in the chair up, I don't just getting. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think they did it to my father in law, if I remember right. Oh. He's a good oh. sport, though. <laughs> he was a good sport. <laughs> yeah, we actually did have something we wanted to talk about that's right. actually kind of um, a teaching moment. All right. So um, I'm anxious to hear your play on this as always. Uh, I know we are of a like mind on so much stuff. It wouldn't surprise me. And plus you don't, you don't do as much as you do without this, but I had no idea how important this was until I realized how important it was. <laughs> so I'm hoping us sharing it will make other people, if they don't already know, no, it's not them. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm giving you a drum roll. You built this up very successfully. Now oh, I'm okay. giving you a drum so it's roll. The, the, <laughs> you want me to start doing it? I got bongos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Lord. Uh, <laughs> stop. Stop. Okay. Okay. Here we go. The power of staying calm. Now, a lot of years I didn't realize how important that was to be the calm person. I didn't know that. And not not just act calm, but actually be calm. <laughs> and no good comes from having a big giant reaction almost no what no matter what happens. Right. But for some reason, I just didn't grasp that at the beginning. Is that a concept that you got right away? Or is that something that came to you over time like me? Because the consistently working in the face of crap going around or in your personal life or whatever's happening right. is a hard skill to do without having a reaction, a bad reaction. It is. And I think that's something everybody struggles with, especially, you know, you, we, let's talk about a business context first. Uh, we have all been in situations where business wise, something wasn't going right. Either uh, something with a company that we worked with wasn't happening the way we wanted it to something in customers lines weren't happening. We've all dealt with that. Um, and uh, I had a friend of mine who used to tell me that I could stay, I could, I could stay calm in the middle of a storm. <laughs> and, and and it basically was to a certain degree because I would uh, quietly remind myself that I work for me, that I I get to control what's going on. Nobody else does, and um, 
So that was my mindset with it. Uh, in personal life situations, it's even tougher because you, you can have everything going perfectly well in your business life. And all of a sudden something really goes kind of uh, wonky in your personal life. And uh, that's can, that can be a gut wrencher for you. And it is, it is time, at times hard to stay focused. So the consistency rule becomes even that much more important to you. Uh, how, how have you dealt with it? What do you think inside you makes you deal with it the way you do? I actually get flack for how I do it because I try to keep doing the things that I do every day for my business. I'm talking more, well, even really, even when um, something happens like at the company or something like that, I still try to keep doing the things because the things I'm doing are not necessarily for one company. Right. They're from brand me. And once I realized that that was the important thing is that um, I kept saying to myself, um, no matter what happens right now, no matter what happens right now, what has happened so far can't be taken away from me. It already happened. Right. What I've learned can't be taken away from me unless I get hit in the head. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, so, right. The, so all that stuff that has happened has made me who I am today. And I'm pretty confident that I can go forward no matter what happens and earn a living. Right. So I think that helps me stay calm, but I do keep working whatever, like if, if something goes down that I'm working, I work the other stuff or, you know, if I have some big problem with one of them, I'll work the other stuff, but that's the reason I have other stuff. So that you I know, have something to work. I think to a certain extent that that really became uh, more apparent that everyone began to understand the ability to mentally adjust during the COVID years when they were shutting everything down and you were having to work remotely or, or you were told not to go to the grocery store, you could die, that kind of stuff. And, right. uh, uh, everybody, two things happened. Number one, people began to realize they could survive without necessarily doing all the things they've always done. But number two, it began to strain a lot of family relationships because all of a sudden <laughs> husbands and wives were together 24 seven and they weren't used to that. So I hear. So I hear. <laughs> but, <laughs> a friend, I, I, I'm saying that for a friend, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's, it, it definitely has been an eye opener for me. Well, I, uh, something that we're doing right now, I would have never thought I would do. And that like a, a live uh, internet show like this or a Zoom call and all that. But the COVID years and everything that you did had to be on Zoom or, or an equal platform. That was, uh, it, it actually pulled me into a new century. So thank you for that, <laughs> I guess, is the best way to say it. But uh, it's not something I would have normally done. I had entertained slightly the thought of doing online events, you know, like doing sales blitzes for Aflac organizations and teaching them some th things and then sending them out the door to make sales calls and, and getting back on the, the line again at the end of the day to see how they did. Cause that's what I would do as a state sales coordinator. And I thought, well, I could do that and, and help some people out with that. Uh, but um, it was not something I probably would still be thinking, you know, I ought to get online more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the calmness thing has helped. Now, I originally had to experience that work related, I think, because stuff would happen. They'd change the comp plan or whatever. All, in these 40 years with the main company, we've had all kinds of stuff happen, right. including many management changes and all that stuff and comp right. plan changes. But um, in 2021 20, that shut down, though, I'm sitting here with a teenager. School's not going to be happening. Yep. And there was, a, there was actually um, a three day, this is only with three days <laughs> that Avon shut down and didn't think that they were going to be able to ship during it. And then they found out they had the loophole of necessary products and started to ship again. So I was sitting there looking at maybe not have an income. Right. And if they I, don't ship, you don't get paid. That's correct, because I'm on commission. And all I could think of was, I just have to have no reaction. I, I can't have some big, giant reaction for the kid. Right. Come on now. So that was that prepared me to be able to stay calm for that, I think. Yeah. And I worked whatever else I could work. But I didn't sit there and say, oh, we are so screwed. Oh, my God. And have some big, giant reaction or not work. Because right. how would that help me? Right. But I see a lot of people do that. I wonder... I, I don't know if anything that we say is going to help that, but 
the, the, the thing that I've, I've, I've heard before, and I try to remind myself, especially if, if the situation I'm dealing with is, is business wise, it's really not personal life stuff. It's just a business difficulty Yeah. is uh, number one is uh, I remind myself to stay a little calm. And I remind myself that even when I worked for someone else, I felt self-employed. I sold my time to the company. I, well, I, it, that later when I became self-employed mm -hmm. with Aflac, I sold my time for commissions on policies, that kind of thing. But uh, the other thing that I heard once, and I have to repeat this to myself at times, is just remember, they can kill you, but they cannot eat you. <laughs> and since they weren't going to kill me, I felt like I was safe. <laughs> Someone said, hello, I'm, I'm late, but here, but I don't know who you are because it just says Facebook user. So maybe Kim Throckmorton. I don't know. Who oh, that? that could be. No, I was just thinking of that one. Um, wasn't that a meme or something where the kid was sitting there and they kept making him sit down and sit down and sit down. And finally, the kid said, I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much sums up my career right there. <laughs> I saw one one time that had a pic picture of a kid and and uh, um, it's a, and somebody was saying something about God made you, you know, there, there was a faith-based thing. And the kid says, God made me small. I grew the rest away myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of cute too. We are, so we are supposed to grow. I'm just going to leave it in that. We are supposed to grow. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I think that is a pretty important thing. And um, I'm not sure it's a skill I can teach other than by example. Right. Some stuff I think is like that. I think, I think Bob is really good at teaching a lot of the mindsets with that because he talks a lot about reframing the situation. Like every, every thing that goes swimming around out there in front of us and comes into us, whether it's what somebody says or they do or anything of that nature, it is it, it, what happens is the fact happens. The thing happens. We see it. We hear it. That happened. But then inside us, we start processing it. and we, we add our own context to it. We add our own content. That's usually from our side of the equation, how, how we've dealt with life, whatever. So we're, we're doing it. And then whatever that thing we're doing with it makes us feel it sets off an emotion inside of us. Then we react based on that emotion. And so when you, uh, when you think about it, the person who's even talking or creating the challenge for you at the time, they're filtering the exact same thing through there. We don't know what they've been through. We don't know what's going on. Like every, every time Aflac would come out with a new policy, I would tell somebody, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this to the group or not, <laughs> uh, but Aflac would come out with something saying, okay, you can't do this. And it's like when you read those warning labels on, on things that say, don't, <laughs> don't swallow the cushion from your sofa. You know, some dumbass has done that. <laughs> and so when Affleck would put out this new regulation, uh, you can no longer do this. I'm thinking, all right, what did somebody do to screw this up? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I actually said that lately because they had a big, oh, oh, me and the kids saw a big brass plaque that obviously cost at least $100 mm -hmm. in the elevator at the Hilton in Miami the Hilton in Miami that said, don't jump up and down. And it actually showed a picture, a, not, not a cartoon of a man. <laughs> and I'm like, can you, what, what actually would have had to happen to warrant that <laughs> spending money on a plaque? Cause the people that are going to jump, aren't going to really look at the plaque. That's true. Uh, Scott said, some people can't be taught. Well, that's true too. I'm glad you're seeing the comments. I am not seeing the comments today. Debbie Britt said she's on. I, I see. I saw Debbie said hi. I don't, but I don't see Scott. Maybe comment. scroll scroll to the bottom, and then it'll feed by itself. You're not getting that. Okay. Yeah. No. And if I if I if I refresh the page, you're liable to lose me. Here, so. Oh yeah, don't do that. Just make sure you notice everybody's comments and you thank them for that because they're sweet people and. <laughs> they, they, um, we did. I did want to say an extra thank you. My new challenge, and I don't want to say who said it to me. It wasn't somebody that you guys all know. It was at that book fair, and she. They were like insinuating that we weren't going to take it taken seriously as a book unless we had at least a hundred reviews on Amazon. And I was I was seeing red because I thought. I'm tapping the card. I know you, so I'm, I'm getting pop, pop, pop in my ear. I knew you were doing something over there. 
<laughs> I'm tapping the card. I was so mad about it. I just, I just didn't, I don't like that felt judgy. I felt like I was getting judged. Anyway, I thought, well, we're going to show this, this lady, this. So yep. anyway, that's what I wanted to came up with the challenge for the hundred reviews. Cause at least we'll be in her eyes, a serious book, which we're serious already. We Dang are. it. We, we, sold, we sold more copies our first week and the most self-published book sale in a whole year. So. And this lady that said that probably has sold less than us. It's just the fact that she said it. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Well, we, we, we do uh, reviews on Amazon or on Audible or on uh, any platform, Goodreads, all of those. Every review oh, you do so helps yeah. the book. Uh, it, it is just, it's but an amazing launch the, thing. The challenge because of her in right. her honor. <laughs> well, you're, 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 you're the challenge queen. So you throw it out there that everybody will respond. I promise. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to thank, cause since we put the challenge out, we have four <laughs> reviews come popping up there. It was Lori Allen, D. Ellen Collins, McCormick, Noel and Robert Peterson. It's your turn to say, sorry, I said, Nicole. <laughs> I, well, actually I didn't say Nicole Noel. I know better, but my, I did it on my phone and the autocorrect had to kick in. And change oh, it from uh, from right. Noel to Nicole. So that's right. that's that's a story I'm going with on this. But it really is, I think, what happened. <laughs> that's the story I'm going with. <laughs> right. You're not <laughs> one of these guys that call all the girls honey and sunshine, are you? <laughs> darling is what I call them. Darling. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Yeah. Okay. And Terry Gustin, she also. I haven't yeah, seen they, Terry's. I need to get Terry's and, and put it online. Yeah. Show everybody. Yeah, that was right around like the first day. So that's how you might have missed that one. But that was of, of this morning. So we might have others. But we still got a little bit of a mountain to climb because we're about 48. We right. were this morning at 48. So we got like 50 to go. But that's all right. Every couple of days, I'll put up a new thing uh, showing how we're close we're getting. Right. And um, am I going to have to do the thing where if we get 100 reviews, then I. Oh, never mind. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go alive and 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 find out that lady's name and say na 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 boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's lame, right? Na 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 boo boo. <laughs> right. The, the Roger yeah. of a joke that I could only tell in the green room, but if you'll remind <gasps> me after the show, I'll tell you a joke about. Na, na, na. Okay. Yes, I do want to hear. It. <laughs> this this um, is a family show most of the time. <laughs> Scott says, "How many reviews does this lady have?" Well, that's right. I didn't sit there at the time when she said it. It felt like she was putting putting us down. Uh, actually, sorry, it felt like she was putting me down. I was standing there. It was me standing there, and it felt like she was putting me down. Right. So I I was just seeing red instead of blue, and I didn't ask her all these questions I should have. Right. I just got offended, but I, I didn't show offense. I just, you know, I was just offended on the inside. Well, you remember what I told you before you went to that event, not about this person that you're talking about now, right. but about a different Oh person. yes, yes. Yeah, if you could, so you, you did, and yeah. and I I took your advice on that other situation. Yeah. And when yeah. you, when people have an ego that makes them, I don't know. There 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 is a certain amount of ego we all have to have. And there was a book written years ago called The Arrogance of Excellence, and it wasn't talking about really being arrogant, but it was talking about okay, if you're good at what you do and you've got tracker, it's okay to feel good about that and feel confident about that. But when you get people who are obviously just throwing out the, their comments <laughs> to lower someone else so that it raises them a little bit better. Uh, well, and that's probably what she was doing too. Yeah. Right. Well, I was telling Lisa, she was having to deal with somebody like that. I told her, just, just remember if you could buy them for what they're worth, and then sell them for what they thought they were worth, we'd make a killing on that deal. <laughs> and then, no, that was really, and, and you said too, um, if that person acted more arrogant than I wanted to deal with just to make an excuse and not deal with them. Yeah. And you were right. I, I ended up doing that and I felt so much better for doing that. Yeah. And normally I probably would have tried to deal with them. Life's so. too short to deal with. Um, <laughs> Horses backside. How's that? Horses backside. <laughs> oh, now I see the comments finally came through. I see Scott's comments there. And Scott, I see where you put that I should have blue hair. Scott, <laughs> Scott wrote, watch me. Go ahead. I know, but before they said Jeff should have blue hair. And I know what he's thinking. And, and Scott, I, I, I say this as a brother to you. 
I didn't write a book called The Couple with the Blue Hair. <laughs> <laughs> I would have I would have gone blue if we'd hit that sales target. But uh, it, secretly inside, I was going, well, I want us to hit that target. Almost. <laughs> well, you can tell the girls they can use the blue hair coloring that I sent. We don't mm -hmm. say dye. It's coloring or enhancement. The enhancement. hair enhancement. <laughs> enhancement? I I know. Enhancement. Move on. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Just dawns on me. Yes, yes, that's awesome. No, the, the matter of fact, this is working for me. <laughs> Did you show everybody the shirt? Did you, did you, yeah, you post a picture? I, I don't have it right here, but I yeah. posted the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff sent me this awesome sweat hoodie that says. It, it, it's got the logo of the, of the blue hair lady uh -huh. on the beach. And it says, this, this is, is working for me. <laughs> Every time we're on an interview, I can count on it, and I enjoy it. I look forward to it. <laughs> but at some point during that interview, Lisa's going to be talking about the, the blue this hair thing, and, and, and said, this is working for me. <laughs> and so I got her that on a shirt. <clears throat> yeah, we got to line up some more interviews. That's uh, I've got some more leads I'm working. Yep. Hey, and I'm going to be on our friend uh, Jenny's um, summit where she has speakers. Oh, cool. So that's coming up. And uh, what else have I got going? I got to fill out some paperwork for her, though. <laughs> yeah, I filled it out when we did the show together. It's your turn. <laughs> oh, I hate it when they want me to do something that you usually do. <laughs> like... we, we, have you ever seen a collaboration or a partnership on something that, that just naturally fell in line? My strengths were your, not necessarily your strengths. Your strengths are not necessarily my I strengths. I haven't. And it just went like that. Yeah. So, but I'm not, doing, have... I'm not doing that form for you. <laughs> The, no, no. Let, let's go back to that for a second here. I have actually, maybe it's because I haven't done that many collaborations though, but I haven't actually had to work with a lot of people that that's worked like that for, I guess. Have you? Kind of. Must be. Yeah, well, I've, I've worked with a lot of people on a lot of different projects that right. uh, either I was in charge of and I was delegating or a combination of things, but uh, not another book. You were, you were my first collaboration on a book. I'm now... Uh, that's as you know that's part of my business model i want to go into mm -hmm. and i i have been working on uh redesigning my website i still have the jeffcwest.com but i also have uh one called coauthoryourmessage.com that when you go when you type that url in it actually takes you to it's still my website but it takes you to a page that's strictly about co-authoring books together uh and i've got one that uh, goes to fusionpoints.com it goes to events i can be booked for and all that so uh, I was afraid you were going to want me to record an audio <laughs> for the book review or the testimonial. No, we're fine. <laughs> you, you can be. <laughs> uh, Lisa, wait, read the words you wrote on the page. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote on the page. You wrote. <laughs> but thank you so much for doing that. Those of you that haven't seen it, if you go to um, coauthoryourmessage.com, it'll bring up my homepage for that and you scroll down and uh, Lisa wrote such a nice, uh, uh, a nice. <laughs> Jeff Jeff Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Jeff Walton dies here. Uh, yeah. Jeff uh, Scott said, uh, um, almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades and nuclear wars. And Let's nuclear not weapons. forget that one. Yeah. 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 Cause I'm, I know that one too. <laughs> it, it counts in another one that I can only say in the green room, but we'll go on. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, oh! You know, you know what we've got to do? We, 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 no, we shouldn't do this because we these people that come to these, we just love them. We want to be around them. But I was thinking we could start charging a premium for and give access to the green room. Boy, wouldn't that be hilarious? They they would be uh, shocked and stunned by our. Um... They'd be shocked and stunned by you. I, I don't say bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Can lightning strike me today? Oh. This, this is your typical winter day in Texas. We, <laughs> this, is, this is your typical winter's day in Texas. It's you know, March, whatever the day is, March 9th. So still into winter. Uh, we've had snows this it's time. It's like 85. It was 85 degrees today. I spent all day on the golf course. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm annoyed. Uh, that you're annoyed by this? Well, in, this summer when it's 100 and whatever degrees down here, and you're up there and you're nice 75 degrees <laughs> summer days. 
You just need to rub it into me like I <laughs> You need to rub it into me like I do you. <laughs> I will I will text Lisa pictures of the weather forecast down here when she's up there and she's getting snow and snow and snow. I'll text her a picture of the weather forecast. It's 85 degrees, sunny. <laughs> and she just calls me bad words. I call you bad words. <laughs> yeah, when I had I had to use the ice pick thing to open the door in one one of the house because it was frozen <laughs> shut. <clears throat> Matter of fact, oh, you know what I did in uh, here though? It's actually dangerous to have this happen. <clears throat> what happened was I had the ring doorbells. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, I probably should take a drink here. Uh, you can take them in. Um, I have the ones where you can charge the battery. So one of the ones is over on a side of the house where we only have a path part way to it. And I thought that I could just troop my way through the snow and up on this rock and change it. And I did that in the dark with a flashlight. And then I fell down at night in the dark in the snow. Ooh. I'm sitting. I immediately I'm like, you got to get your ass up here quick. Ooh. I said, I said, you got to get, <laughs> you gotta get your butt up here quick because five minutes, I'm going to have a problem. I could, I could get hypothermia that quick because it was like seven yeah. out. So I, I should know better. I don't do that. The other thing I don't ever do is leave the house without my keys in my pocket. Because if I can't get back in, I got a big problem right away. Right. Well, that's not true down by you, right? You can't, even when it's really hot, you're not going to die right away. No, no. If you stayed in a car for some reason, you could. That, that happens down here. People will not realize they've left sometimes their children oh, in the car. And yeah. That's just horrible. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, it gets cold here. My first year in Texas was, now this was North Texas, which would be cooler than where I'm at now. I'm in spring Texas right now. But the um, temperature that Christmas in 1989 got to three degrees below zero or something like that. It was, oh, it was yeah. cold. And uh, I remember I waited too long to ship presents back to Georgia for Christmas. And so I had to drive to the bus station down in Dallas and it was icy. And <laughs> so that was a pain, but, uh, but I you don't remember. have the stuff to deal with it too, right? We don't have the, uh, Texas doesn't really, I mean, yeah, the bigger cities will have some ways to put sand or whatever it is on the bridges and all that, but uh, not equipped like up there, what you'd have to be. Not well, and you don't have basements, right? You're on you're on a slab. Uh, some some will. Uh, most homes out here are on slabs, but some will have storm shelters. Oh, so okay. Not, not a full say, basement, um, but at least a storm shelter. I remember when I lived in Mississippi when it got really cold like that. Suddenly, everybody had a freezing pipe problem, and of course, here I don't have that problem because I have a basement. So the, the your your pipes are all below ground level. Oh, so you'd have to have a big giant. I, your furnace would have to be out totally for that not to be for there down to be here when it when it gets when it's going to be a hard freeze and you know it's going to stay below 30 28 degrees whatever for for several days then you better leave your pipes running and so what yeah. i'll do is i'll run a little bit of hot water uh into one tub and a little bit of cold water into the, another tub and just let that go until the weather gets back up we had that big freeze i guess it was two years ago now in february i think it was two years ago and where the Texas power grid just really struggled Ooh. where I was, I was out on the ranch in Ledbetter during that. And it was so far out in the middle of nowhere. We never even lost power. They were doing rolling blackouts and we never lost power <laughs> because they forgot we were there. <laughs> so far out in the middle of nowhere we were. But, uh, I, we, we have a uh, uh, instant hot water heater, the, the tankless water heater. So it's oh, yeah, made yeah. by propane, but you know, it, you don't have to have a big water thing. And I didn't even think about, uh, the fact that the cold, the hot water line could freeze up out there because it's cold oh. water that feeds it. Yeah. And so uh, during true. that, I first thought I'd left the cold water on, but not the hot. No. And so I had a little issue there, and I went out there with a with a uh, a hair dryer and a towel <laughs> and just kind of stuck it there and let it thaw it out. And then it had a little leak, but I was able to fix that. So. Yeah, this has been a different experience than all those years I spent. I was actually a lot longer in the trailer park than you were. I was there for almost 16 years, and that was a never-ending horrible thing. But anyway, um, 
living here is a lot different than that. Down there, if everything froze, even when it wasn't that cold. Right. <laughs> but here, I don't have those kind of problems anymore. So I That's think I was awful. in mine for three years. I think we moved in there. If I remember correctly, we moved in there at the, toward the end of 93, and then we moved out in 96. So. Yeah, that was, yeah, smarter. No, well... Yeah. I did what I did. This, this. I'm kind of glad I did that. It's like whatever. Everything that everything that that happens, kind of directs that path reason. to where we are. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm not unhappy of who I am right now, so that's fine. Yeah. Yay. That's a good thing. That's what it should be. <laughs> this is this thing. This is working for you. <laughs> this is it's working for me. <laughs> All of it. It's working for me. <laughs> You're just not gonna say anything. Sometimes I'm just speechless, and I just keep going. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, the I did a, a newer up upload of the di of the um, blue hair diagram or the logo or whatever you want to call it. Oh yeah, and it was a better quality of oh, those that I just got for Lisa. So I'm going I'm, I'm going to replace those. If any of you didn't order something and you want that, I'm going to replace it with that newer design. And the the other one was fine. It's just it's it's kind of a lighter. Uh, more translucent look and this was a little more vivid a little so. darker yeah there was a couple other people that did their hair blue i saw i saw that, they, that I, was I haven't seen anything today though have you just a due no, today this was a couple days ago okay yeah so, yeah that. yeah and um you know like we've been saying no, no, i'm messing with the thing doing up yeah and yeah sorry about that I too much noise you're making too much noise i know i know uh yeah it was uh it, my my cousin jack's visit that's making me a little yeah yeah, I had cousin Jack was over yeah. earlier. <laughs> cousin Jack can sometimes just cause all kinds of problems. Yeah, cousin Jack. I, so. I, 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 at times, I will get to know his, his cousin Jack's best friend, cousin Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> cousin Jameson, yeah, that's awesome. He's Irish. He's Irish. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, Jameson, glad you're here, boy. <laughs> Oh goodness gracious! I was going to tell you something that it's totally gone, which happens to me a lot. Oh, what I was going to say is, I've been saying this all along. This is a long-term project, so right. um, you're going to see us circle back and start doing some of the stuff. Me, I don't mean I'm not dragging you into this. <laughs> me circling back and doing some of the stuff like um, promoting the wristband some more, mm -hmm. um, doing puzzles again, doing. Aren't some, you proud? Yeah, I am very proud. Yeah, I'm very proud. I don't even want to show that I don't have mine. <laughs> I leave mine now beside my computer so I don't forget. <laughs> oh, that's a very good idea. Now, you know, the last one, I had it on on the way home from the cruise, and I ended up giving it to a lady I was talking to at the airport. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know how many times that's happened where I took the one off I was wearing and gave it to somebody. But I'm going to do more color pages, more recipes. I'm going to circle back and start doing those things again now that I'm home for a little bit. Um, and this is going to continue on. So, uh, you know, don't don't get sick of it. Just realize that's what it is right. when you when you launch and have a book. Um, that's what it is. But yeah. those of you like Scott knows when we did view from the top, it was we talked about that for years and years. So we're pretty early on the process right now. Yeah. No, this so. has always been a marathon. Yes, indeedy. I think that's hard. Um, when I was at that book fair and it was the independent, uh, all of those guys were independent writers. Right. Um, they didn't think the same way that we did about being independently published. They were more like it was punishment and that they they definitely all want to get a publisher. Okay. Right. And I think, and I tried to say, but see, I don't have the uh, numbers to back me yet, no. really. But I tried to say, you know, the, the most that's going to be a benefit really is that they're going to take a bunch of your profit. Yeah, they're not necessarily going to sell your book for you. You're going to have your own following. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well, when it when it comes to traditional publishing versus uh, versus uh, self publishing or independent publishing versus the hybrid model that's out there now, uh, you, all of them have their points. You know, like you, you know that I originally wanted to do this with traditional publishing, and I, I think we could have pulled that off, but it would have delayed the book another year. Right. And you and I both decided that really wasn't what we wanted to do. It was ready. We didn't need to do that. And um, the uh, but with traditional publishing. Uh, just so those of you that if you're watching the show, you want to know these things behind the scenes, you get about half the royalties 
that you get when you self-publish. So it's, it's about the, it's about half the royalties. The traditional publisher doesn't do a lot of marketing efforts. You know, a good friend of ours is uh, John David Mann. He's a New York Times bestseller. And he was the first one to tell me, book publishers really don't do a lot. You, they, they will sometimes give you money for marketing, but you still have to be the one to go do it. Uh, and you have to fly around to do the book signings and do all that. And he said, uh, he, he, we talked about the different things and I, and I may, I still would like to go traditional publishing at least once. So someone other than me can say, I wanted to publish that book. You know, so you know that about me. It's, it's a thing. But, uh, the, but when you, when you self publish or you traditional publish, if you can turn out a good product, now there's some, there's some absolute crap out there, guys, that's self published and people do that. And so that level of work doesn't give you a very good reputation. But with what we did with blue hair, it looks as good and smells as good. And there's a great story as if it was put out by anybody else. And the, the small to medium publishers want you to sell about 5,000 copies in the first year. Um, the larger houses want you to sell about 10,000 copies in the first year. We will probably come pretty close on the 5,000, I think, before it's all said and done. I, I don't know that, but that's that's what my gut tells me. Uh, we uh, will make as much as we would have made if we'd published it in one of the big houses. And so it, it is a business venture on top of that. So, but, uh, oh, speaking of John David Mann, I uh, was emailing him back and forth this week. Don't everybody, don't forget to mark your calendars, April the 6th, uh, John David Mann and his wife, Anna Gabriel Mann will be here joining us. And uh, we just want you guys to get to know them. We've kind of, I, I laughingly say we've fallen in love with them. We want, we want you guys to as well. But uh, John's got another book coming out this summer. Plus he's got other projects going on. He's, he's, they've got multiple things. On, they, they, when they did the Go Giver Marriage, they kind of turned that into its own model. And Anna's out teaching classes on that all the time, so it's it's going really well for them. You know what I was telling them guys in the class I was teaching down there is, to me, it's the same thing as anything else that I sell. The book was, and mm -hmm. if you think about it, I did do it this way. I knew who I was going to sell it to before we did the book. Mm -hmm. So the guys that were writing a book, they're, they're like doing it in reverse and struggling because they're writing the book and then they're saying, who am I going to sell it to now that I have this book here? Right. And I, you almost need the customer base first. You, you really do. No, no, no traditional publisher will pick anybody up if they don't think they have a market to be able to go sell that book. They won't even, they won't even pick them up anymore. And no. it's because self-publishing has become, it, it, it's no longer the best. Uh, <laughs> it's no longer the illegitimate child. I didn't know what you're going to say there at first. Now I do. <laughs> no, you do. It, but it, it's, that used self-publishing used to be down here, or traditional publishing is up here. It's not that way anymore, really. It, it's it's pretty much neck and neck. If it's a good quality product and you produce it well, we produced ours very well. Yeah. Uh, the uh, so it's it's really not and, and I get the fact that I I still want to be published. So I've wanted a piece of music published and I've never got that published. You know, I mean, I've, I've, when you're on Amazon, you can't tell who's published and who's self especially especially the way I, well, I produced ours. Lisa, I, I produced it. Everything about it is exactly like it was published. I just published it under West Marketing Group. That's all. And uh, everything about it, the, the all, all the ISBNs, copyright, the the Library of Congress certification. All the formats that it's uploaded everywhere. That we, I just produced the book that way, and uh, and so it's it's a it's, it was a good product. There's a hybrid model now that's kind of interesting too. That where uh, you pay someone to be your publisher, uh, where it might be a fee of anywhere from five thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars, whatever, but you're paying them, and then they do all the work that I did, like on hours, but all the stuff that I was doing behind the scenes, and oh, yeah. they, they do all of that. Uh, they do help. Those companies actually help market you better than a traditional publisher does. I've got a friend who published a book through that model, and, and they, you can tell they're doing a lot of things to help him get uh, notices, uh, get to all different shows. He's even, he's even been on some local TV shows in Tennessee oh, nice. and all that. And, that, you know, I, I, that was not a model I wanted to pursue myself, but it's also earned its own legitimacy, I think, uh, because if, 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 if I looked at the time invested in blue hair, uh, and the, the audible book and all that, I, I never counted the hours on it because to, to me, it was just a project. Was we were going to get this done and just get it done. Mm -hmm. But you add all that up. If the companies are doing that and helping promote, it's probably worth paying somebody five grand for that. Yeah. I oh, know yeah. On, on my, on my new book projects that come up, uh, 
I'll be quoting a higher price to people than that to write a book with them because of the fact you and I know each other and I knew you had a market. So that was a gamble I was easily willing to take. Some people won't necessarily have that market and, but they'll want to take a book and they're going to want to use it to help get them maybe on stage and, and start earning their credibility on a bigger level than what their current pod may be. And so they'll go out and make a lot of money with that book anyway, because they're going to be doing other things with it. But, uh, yeah, matter of fact, when we're sharing this information on here. You faded out. Is it me or you? I lost you. I have no idea if it's me. I'm going to sing you a song. It's restarting. Did you? <laughs> Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You can't see me. I can um, see you now. You had frozen up, but I can see you now. But I have no yeah. idea what you were saying for like 15 oh, okay. or 20 seconds. Well, no. Um. We're sharing this information and believe it or not, I think this is relevant for the people in our audience because I've done a whole bunch of stuff like this as an Avon rep to build my Avon business sure. because I knew to compete on the national level, I needed to set myself apart and uh, to be known. And right. one of the easy ways to be known is have a book absolutely, and be willing to speak. I think that's been something that really changed my career. And it's not something that I, I was comfortable at all doing. And I, um, I kind of like doing it now, but at the beginning, <laughs> not at all. And this, and, <laughs> this is going to come as a total shock to you, but I'm kind of a ham on stage. <laughs> Yeah, I'm shocked and stunned. You're totally shocked, aren't you? <laughs> if I can't make them laugh, I'm, or if I if I get off the stage, if I've done a 45 minute keynote and I haven't made them laugh and cry, I'm ticked off that I didn't do my job very well. And you know what? I don't like to do the cry thing. I'm, you're shocked by that, I'm sure. Right. Was crying clown? Let him out. Let him out. But I ended up doing that sometimes. Somebody would ask me a question from the audience. I'd end up telling them some story, and it would make me cry, and that was horrible. And That's then they'd all be crying too. And it would be like that. And then people would go, that was the highlight of your presentation. And I'd be like, I was so embarrassed by that. <laughs> uh, never be embarrassed by that because what happens is it, it's, it's that emotional connection combined with the logic of what you're doing that makes people remember that. And that's it. Don't ever, don't ever think that's bad hard. about the, your emotions getting out. But that's hard. That that's hard. That's hard for me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're, but I'm you're learning. A, you're you're a grown up girl now. Put on your big girl britches and let's go. My good big girl panties. Phew. I know. I, I just have britches instead of panties. <laughs> I know the original saying. I'm just cleaning it up for the crowd. You never I don't know. Let, yeah, Our Jeep's daughter like... may be watching. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Boy, is panties a bad word? You what? <laughs> Look at you. Oh, you're blushing. <laughs> I'm not blushing. Okay. I got a little sun on the golf course today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good one. Okay. I think I even said the word sun once or twice on the golf course today. Sun. <laughs> I still want to drive the golf cart around and moon people. Not moon people. Flash them. <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about, man? Right. It just seems like it'd be fun. <laughs> that uh, Actually, when you have, uh, like I've, I've played in a lot of tournaments and, and charity things and all that, and they would always have multiple carts going around with, with the cart girls selling beer and oh. raffle tickets or whatever. And so it always, it, it uh, seems like it would be fun on that end of it. So. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> you, you, you could sell some beer and Cousin Jack. <laughs> I, could, I could, couldn't I? Yeah. Yep. I never I'm, confuse I'm, that and say Captain Jack because Captain Jack's a, another slang term for some sort of drug, and I don't remember which one it was. So, oh, I didn't know that. But Cousin Jack's fine. You can get away with it. You say Captain Jack, I think of Jack Sparrow. I think of Johnny Depp, and I would do him. <laughs> yeah, heard it here at 6.58, my time. Two minutes before the top of the hour, she threw in. <laughs> Johnny Depp. <laughs> oh, uh, he's awesome. <laughs> I, I wish I could do a Johnny Depp impression. I, I think his voice is so unique. He's I awesome. Can't, I can't yeah. He's mystery, like a mystery guy. I can do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. Oh, let's hear it. Lisa, you have to get it right the first time. You have you can't get it right the first time. Then you have to go it again and again and again and again. Get down. 
hell's that? That's probably white to the system. No, that was awesome. <laughs> I, can do, I can do an Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's about the only one I can do. That was good. That was I'm actually governor, really good. I'm the governor of California. <laughs> Oh, that was really good. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we, we've uh, made up for last week in that um, kerfuckle that happened with the Internet. That's not a swear. I looked it up. And <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> so I hope everybody... I could say the word something. peanut butter, and if I meant it as a swear, it would still be a swear. <laughs> what, what the heck? <laughs> okay. Kerfuckle's not a cuss word? Okay. Peanut butter. You Peanut said it. Butter. You said it. You actually said the word. Good for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad influence. <laughs> and I mean Thank that you. in the best possible way. Thank you. I took that as a compliment. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I am so wrong. Okay. So thank you everybody for coming tonight. Make sure if you, if you feel so inclined that you help me with my challenge, because that, that person that told me that, Oh, I want to see blue and not red. <laughs> I'm seeing red. <laughs> I know I shouldn't uh, make my life goals around people's random comments, but I did. So anyway, it, it would help us out anyway. So let's show her and help us. I mean, show the person and oh, help us out. I didn't want to say what gender she well, was. but some, some of the biggest books ever known in history started off as self-published. Yes. The Rich Shack. Dad. Uh, Rich, Rich Dad. Man, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um Gosh, what else? Oh, uh, Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol. Oh, as a, as a I didn't know that. That's like one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. You know, the Christmas Carol one with um, who, uh, the old version, the old, old version. I forgot who the guy that plays it. I play that every year before I figure out my Christmas bonuses. <laughs> I, wa I make myself watch it so I'm not stingy. So you're, so you're not just Scrooge and you, you go ahead and go to the end of the movie. There you go. Yes. yes. <clears throat> my favorite Thank version you. of A Christmas Carol is the one with Patrick Stewart oh. playing Ebenezer Scrooge. He's a, he's a just awesome actor. That's not mine, but I forgot what the guy's name mm. is. I'll have oh. to tell you later because I don't remember the guy's name, but it's older than that, older than the Patrick Stewart one. I it's played it. Um, I played it we did, I, in high school and a little bit in uh, middle school. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. <clears throat> I did acting, and I, I was in a, a Christmas Carol at one <gasps> You did? Yeah, but I didn't I have the main that. role. I don't remember what role it was now. Oh, but... that's awesome. I didn't know you were in the theater thing. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I went uh, at my high school, and it, it wasn't a large school. It, you know, my graduating class had 200 people or something like that. Wow. But I, I won the best actor role my junior yeah. and senior year. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. It, it, we were doing really important plays like, who hid the duck? No, I'm kidding. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> the it was they, they, were, they were not high levels of cultural experience. They were just high school. That players. sounds a little racy. Who, who hid the duck? <laughs> <laughs> but they, my, uh, the, uh, I, I, my, my school, the, before the last two years, I was in a, the larger school that had a couple hundred people per class. Before that, I was in a school that we had 70 or 80 in each class. And so in, in the small town, it was called a senior class play and it would, it would happen every year. They never got enough seniors. I was actually in four senior class plays, <laughs> not because it took me 12 years to get out of that grade. Either. I was a freshman. No, who my sophomore year, one, my junior year, one, my senior year. Yeah. The kids all disappointed because he's one of those regional high schools where there's not many kids per class. And uh, we went to some other kids and they had their own auditorium. We have a cafe gymatorium. So they have folded chairs for the theater thing, and then they take yep. them back away and have the tables for lunch. <laughs> yep. My first two years, same thing. They, they put chairs out on the gymnasium floor. <laughs> uh, third year they did as well, but the fourth year it was actually a theater. So we, we had a, a school theater with seats and all that stuff. So. Yeah, there's no chance of that happening here, really. <laughs> I can still remember some of my lines from some of those plays. Because there's one of them that I had the main, two of them actually, I had the main role. Uh, for the male, anyway. And one of them, I was playing a, a Southern gentleman dressed like Colonel Sanders. Here I was, 17 years old, maybe something like that. Dressed like Colonel Sanders, white beard, white hair. And I was a, I was a calm man. I, I was Colonel Jason <laughs> Swilwell of the, of the firm Swilwell, Pierce, Hammersmith, and something or other. Swilwell. And, yeah. and the way that particular play ended, it was the, 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 the older fellow was a con man throughout the thing. And uh, the way it ended is 
as he, he, he sees his, he sees a better way to do things. He and his daughter reconciled. It was good. But then as we're getting ready to leave, I literally walk off the stage and I go out in the audience and I got a, picked out a guy and, and I said, sir, the entire time I was on that stage, I could not help but notice your regal bearing and your acute mental attitude out here. Allow me to introduce myself. And I picked him up and, and I start talking to him and walked him out of the room. <laughs> oh, he didn't know you were going to do it? Uh, no, it was a plant. They oh, knew we were going to do it. Oh, and that's like, funny, though. <laughs> it was uh, once was the drama teacher's uh, father, that kind of thing. But yeah, it, 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 they weren't shocked when I did it, but it, the crowd was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of neat, though. I can see you doing that. I, I played in a lot of church passion plays and all that. So, yeah, a lot of you're going to have to have a talk with Alice because he gets mad when he doesn't get the part he wants. And I kept telling him, well, that's life in the theater, really, isn't it, though? It is. Sometimes it has nothing to do with skill set. You just keep telling me, look, it has nothing to do with skill set. Sometimes it has everything to do with, are you the right person for that character? If that character, if it's not the right body type or if it's not the right look or whatever, and you don't get the part, don't sweat it. If you are the right look and you are the right persona for it and you don't get it on skill set, okay, get better at the skill. Yeah. Just as simple yeah, as yeah. that. So, yeah. You know, Whitney's got a degree in acting. I don't know if I told you that. <gasps> No, yeah. I didn't know that. Well, I know she got, she's working. She's working on weddings or something, right? Yeah, she 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 works for a wedding planner right now. But the uh, she did her first two years in musical theater in L.A. No, excuse me, in New York, and then her last two years in Hollywood. So <gasps> that was one was uh, oh. stage and one was film and TV. That's and yeah, awesome. she has a, she has a bachelor's in fine arts and acting. So. Wow! Oh, that's awesome! I can't wait to meet them. They should yeah. go on the trip with us. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to plan a trip part of advance yeah. and get them on there. So, yeah, All right. yes. we need okay. to get out of here. We need to get going. Thank you very much, everybody. And we will post this on YouTube and we will see you next time. Thank Bye. you.